This is the Main Attraction Podcast. Now here are your hosts, Justin Strawn and Ryan Nelson. Welcome to the Main Attraction Podcast, where we discuss the biggest television shows and movies in the entertainment industry. I am your host, Justin Strawn. Joining me each week is the other host of the show, who wants to, who is very surprised to learn and now convinced that what t-shirts, what t-shirt contests aren't just for women. Ryan Nelson. Justin, I'm glad you brought that up. Can you imagine? How good it had to feel for Glenn Powell that they're like, Glenn, we're doing a rain sink. Go get a white shirt, a white t-shirt off. <laughs> He's like, absolutely, man. That's how good you look. Yeah, I mean, I like that would never, you know, the rest of us is like, hey, can you go put a sweatshirt on? <laughs> Please don't go out here. We're just like black, t-shirt. so we don't say anything. But they're like, Glenn, go get the thinnest white t-shirt that you, you have. Find. And we're gonna, yeah. we're just gonna suppose you to yeah. everybody. So uh, I'm gonna tell you that man is too damn powerful. Yes, he is. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but listening to this podcast since we started a couple of years ago. Thank you for continuing to listen and making us a part of your day. If you are new to the podcast, we hope you enjoyed as we talk about the movie Twisters. Uh, whether or not you are new or a regular and like more access to the show, you can visit our Patreon page and become a patron of the Main Attraction Podcast. Go to patreon.com slash the Main Attraction Podcast and you can get Patreon-only content. You can support us at a $3, 5 10 or $20 level. And when you join up, we'll shout you out here on the show. If you want ad-free access to the podcast, any level of being a Patreon supporter will get you the show ad-free. doesn't matter which level you sign up for. All four levels get you the show without commercials. If you want additional bonus content, for example, we just did a a quick little wrap-up of House of the Dragon. We didn't get a chance to cover it in full like we did the first season, but if you want a quick little wrap-up of our thoughts on just Season 2 in general, uh, just go sign up for the 5 the $10, or $20 level, and you can get access to that. If you can't be a patron, though, you can help the show out by rating us on Spotify and Apple Podcasts. Uh, we'd love it if you did so. Uh, we'd also love it if you left us a review and while you're on Apple Podcast, uh, We'd love it if you went there, wrote us an actual review, and we will read it on air next time we record. Uh, if you want to interact with us, you can do so. You can send us an email to mainattractionpod at gmail.com. You can always uh, send us an email there and send us any thoughts or questions you might have, any comments you'd like to add. You can always catch us on social media as well, but you, if you just want to get a direct line to us, uh, then you can go to mainattractionpod at gmail.com in your email box and send us a line. All right, we are discussing the movie Twisters. This came out in the middle of July, towards the end of July. Um, it hit its way, it's made its way to video on demand uh, last week. I did not get a chance to go see it in theaters. Just the timing of it when it came out, and there was just no way I was going to be able to get to the theaters to, to check it out. I know you saw it in theaters. I did. Uh, rocked in theaters. It's still really good in uh, at home, too. I'll just go ahead and tell you that much right now. Yeah, so. I can't wait to watch it again. Yeah, so uh, I picked it up on Video On Demand, and uh, so, so we decided there's really not a lot else in terms of television going on, so I was like, hey, yeah. do you want to go ahead and just uh, knock this thing out, uh, even though it's been about a month? We're like, heck, why not? So uh, general thoughts on the movie. Let's just what are, let's start with the original first. What's your general thoughts on it? So I remember enjoying the original when it came out and then like i think i told you i watched it about a month ago and i was like damn this is good (laughs) this is really good and i was shocked they never made a sequel to that movie because it was dying for one yeah Mm. yeah and uh i know jean devant the guy from speed and right and that movie, like, he kind of went crazy, I think, and they had issues with him <laughs> in Hollywood, so that may have, you know, put, you know, caused a problem. I know Bill Paxton and Helen Hunt both tried to work on it at some point. I'm just shocked it never happened, because the original was really good, and especially when you look at, like, that was the start of Philip Seymour Hoffman. Yeah, I mean, was. that was like a huge part of his, you know, career, and then Helen Hunt and Bill Paxton both took off even more after that, right. even though they had been around, and but I mean, they went to, you know, almost A-list. Yeah. Hell, Helen Hunt won an Oscar. Yeah, Helen Hunt won an Oscar. I would say that she made yeah. A-list. Uh, she still A-list, do a lot afterwards. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right. So, I mean, like, I love, I love the original. Uh, I like the original. Uh, I enjoyed it. Uh, I, I don't have quite the same fervor for it that that you did. Uh, I just always, it's a little cartoonish uh, in my opinion. I thought that, it can be for sure. Yeah. Uh, so that was always kind of my my hold up on just making it like one of my greatest films I've ever seen. I've seen it a few times. Oh, I mean, years. I would say it's the greatest. Well, film no, 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 I'm just saying it's it's. it's 
it does what you want in yeah, a summer does. blockbuster. Yeah, it does. Uh, like I said, so, but I'm not just like the, a, ma a massive fan of the first. I know a lot of people who just absolutely love the first film. Um, yeah. Like I said, I enjoyed it. I thought it was good, but uh, I'm like, like not just a massive fan of the first one. And like I said, it's a little bit cartoonish, a little bit. I thought it got hokey at times, but in terms of giving you what you want, I thought it did it. It did that. It gave mm -hmm. you tornadoes. And uh, it gave the, you carnage. the two leads were incredible yeah. together. Mm -hmm. Like they had chemistry. They were perfect. Like that's who you want leading yeah. leading that movie. Because like you know, I had read that that Tom Hanks had signed up, and then he changed his mind and he said, you know, Bill Paxton, because they had just done Apollo right. thirteen, was like, I really think Bill Paxton would be better in this role. Anyway, and he was right. Yeah, the Tom Cruise because you know what was he's too polished. What, he's too and he would take up too much of the spotlight. Yeah. Helen Hunt and Bill Paxton were on the same level, and they felt like on the same level, and that's what made that movie work so well. Yeah, I agree with you. I, I, I agree with you 100%. All right, let's talk about tornadoes just in general real quick. Uh, since we're doing tornadoes... Oh, they're freaking and, frightening. <laughs> they're on an EF scale, so one to five on the EF scale, what are you rating tornadoes in the terrifying uh, department? Uh, f five, man. I mean, I've never... I've never been i've never had one like come by my house but i've had some you know that were near it yeah i will say this uh for me they are they were they were a five when i was growing up because when i was growing up if there was a bad like a bad storm or something that came through and woke me up in the middle of the night i didn't know if there was a tornado because you know we didn't have we didn't have alarms on our phones. Oh, yeah. We didn't have anything like that. They, uh, they, they've taken a little bit of that out just because of the fact that they are, you can, you now have a lot more warnings and things like that. So they're more down. To like that, a three that's or a four. good point. You're right about that. Uh, that that's a good point. Cause I, I lived by the Mississippi river, right? you know, and, and, and so like we would have warnings, like you said, in the middle of the night where we have to get up, right. you know, and stuff like that. So you, you're right though. You're, you're much better, you know, you know, warned about stuff. Now we have had a few close calls with them, like in twenty, right before the pandemic in twenty twenty. Uh, we had just moved into. Oh, this, yeah. We had just moved into this house about a year before, uh, about a year earlier, and in January of twenty twenty, there was we knew that a bad storm was coming. Uh, about two o'clock in the morning, my phone starts going off. I thought it was a, I thought it was a. Uh, Amber Alert going off, uh, so it's going off. And I look, I'm not good in the like when I first wake up. It takes me a bit to get going. So this thing's going off. I'm just trying to turn it off, and like I get it turned off, it goes off again. I'm like, what in the world? And then I saw a sudden we start hearing, and like there was a tornado that basically went over us. Um, it took out a ton of trampolines in our neighborhood. Uh, some people oh, got more damage. Uh, we still, there is, we had patio furniture that we still have not located because it wow. got taken away. We had a grill, never found it. Uh, and we, look, we wow. were lucky. We didn't, we don't have a fence up. Uh, most of our neighbors have fences and their fences were just absolutely destroyed. Uh, there were a few neighbors in our neighborhood that had, like storage buildings out back, and those were just absolutely demolished, and some of them were got sent to the middle of the road. But less than a quarter of a mile north of us, completely, it finally touched down, and it completely wiped out some homes. Uh, like I said, so that's that's the closest we've ever come. Uh, what was funny about that though is like when it when it finally happened, uh, I went upstairs and like told the like to, well went upstairs, you know. Yelled, come downstairs, come downstairs. And Jackson was sleep for whatever reason. Our daughter was sleeping in, in Jackson's room this night because uh, she was scared about the storm. She knew the storm was coming, so she wanted to sleep in his room. And he didn't realize that she was up there in his room, so he left her. Oh wow! <laughs> so when, oh, he gets, no. when he gets downstairs, me and my wife are like, "Where's your sister?" And he goes, "She's still." She's like, "Well, I don't know." He, she's like, hey, "She's in your room." <laughs> so I ran upstairs to go get her, and like as soon as oh, I. Man. As soon as I woke her up, she's like groggy. All of a sudden, she heard she like she bolted down the stairs because she is terrified oh, of storms. Wow. Uh, yeah. But yes, yeah, yeah. so that was our closest call that we've ever had. So, all right, let's talk about this film then. Uh, what are your general thoughts on it? You know, if you're going to reboot a movie, and I guess I guess this is a reboot. What would you call this? <laughs> Legacy sequel, I would say. If you're going to make a legacy sequel, this is how you do it. This yeah, it is, is mm -hmm. it takes the best parts of the 
of the first film, excuse me, modernizes it. You add in a, a big, a big stars like Glenn yeah. Powell, and then some other great stars, you know, with him. And then you bring in the, using special effects of today. You have a fantastic director. And you make this like a summer blockbuster that feels like those 90s ones. Mm -hmm. This is why I think this movie has taken off. And I think this is why you could sense this was going to be a hit. Because it felt like those 90s movies. And people our age and younger who have watched Twister <laughs> on TNT and everything else were like, oh man, I want to see this. And it felt like, it felt like that movie, but honestly, probably better. Yeah, I this was I, like I, said, I really didn't know what to expect coming into this. I thought it would be good. I was looking forward to it. There was a part of me that that was like, I don't know about this. I'm not sure this is the road that we need to go down. But I was really impressed by it when coming out of it. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. It ended up. It was much better than I thought it would be. Because like I said, knowing my original feelings on the first one. Like I said, I enjoyed it, but I didn't just absolutely love it. Uh, I was afraid, you know, that we we're going to kind of get... When you have something that's a sequel or a legacy sequel, sometimes you don't match that, uh, and you yeah. get a worse version of it. And like I said, I don't know that I would have yeah. really cared that much about a worse version of the original, ver uh, the original movie. Right. But this movie, I mean, you can see Tom Cruise's influence on Glenn Powell. I mean, he oh, is... Yeah. He he's is, a movie star. He's a movie star, and he is doing, you know, guaranteed box office success things, things that he can add a little bit of cachet to. Uh, mm -hmm. I mean, you know, doing this film was like, it's an easy thing to do if you if you just make sure that you replay the hits. That's what this movie does. It replays the hits. It is a different story. It's a different setting, all that type of stuff, but they still do kind of a lot of the same stuff. So you have the big traumatic moment at the beginning where the right. female character loses people that are important to her. You've got, yeah. uh, you know... The drive, the drive in movie scene in the first one is replaced right. by a, a rodeo in this rodeo, one. Yeah. Uh, and then you've got the big, huge tornado that shows up at the end, and it looks like it's going to like kill everybody. But you know, it's our heroes find a way to save the day and all this type of stuff. So, um, I thought that this story worked better than the original did. The first one, I always struggled a little bit with that story because it always felt like. She was hunting the same... The Helen Hunt's character was hunting the same tornado that killed her father. And, like, that's right, just not right, the way right, the tornadoes right. work. Yeah, they're, yeah. they're all different. Yeah. Uh, but that's kind of the way that it felt, like, in, in the first one. So I'll, that's one of the things that always helped me back from, like, just loving that film. I was like... I can see that because it felt like, you know, if you ever watch... I'm trying to think. Some of those monster movies where yeah. they've had something bad, and so they they like they went they went to decide so they could learn how to defeat Godzilla or King right. Kong or something like. That. Actually, uh, Rebecca Hall's character I think is like that, isn't right. she? Yeah, I think well, so, in yeah. the Godzilla versus Kong movies. Yeah. Anyway, so there is there's usually characters like that, like. So Helen Hunt kind of did feel like that. It did. And like I said, I always kind of struggled with that that that, that storyline just for that for that reason. Uh, and look, I don't know. This story is kind of gobbledygooked as well, but at least it's like science stuff and like. Yeah. Could this work? I don't know, but they make it sound like it could work. So yeah, I'm like, okay, sure. sure why not? <laughs> what, what what I loved is the trailer and the first half of this movie. You're like. Damn, Glenn Powell and them are the villains. Yeah, well, I was very interested in that. So you go ahead and talk about that a little bit. But you're like, God, he's a jerk, you know. And then they start to sprinkle all things. No, he actually is much smarter than he reali you realize. And also, he's trying to help people. He's right. raising money, right. you know. And then you find out, you know, Javi and uh, Mr. Future Superman are, are really, I guess you would say, the villains, yeah. you know, uh, so I thought that was interesting because, like, they really make Glenn Powell's character Tyler just look like an absolute jerk almost the first half of this movie. Yeah, and look, I was really interested to see how they were going to do this because when I saw the first saw the trailers, you can see the guy is basically this. It it was almost like, and there are people like this. If you've ever seen oh, yeah. these crazy storm chasers, 
Because when I found out that he was playing one of those type characters, like, oh, God, that makes sense. Because, And I guarantee there's about to be a lot more that yeah. are going to have cowboy hats and acting like him. But, like, if you ever watch Storm Chasing, there are crazy people like him, like, fly driving into yeah. the storm and stuff like that. Although I will say, I saw a meteorologist the other day that said, ladies, if you are getting to the storm chasing to find the Glenn Powell, he's not here. You're going to be very, <laughs> very disappointed with the, what the, these guys look like. Yeah, like I said, I didn't know how they were going to do this when I watched the trailers because the trailers, they make him out to be, well, I mean, what he is. I mean, he's this arrogant, over-the-top yeah. type of you know YouTuber that's just out there looking for attention. But right. you see scenes with he and Daisy Ridley Jones. Is it Ridley Jones? Daisy Edgar Jones. Edgar Jones. Daisy Edgar Jones. You see scenes. You, there are moments when they're together on the posters. The two of them are together. You know that these two are supposed to start working together at some point. So I was like, how are they right, going right. to make that part of the story work? And they do. They end up pulling them together. Like I said, we'll talk more about specifics in just a little bit. But Glenn Powell... I said this when we covered Hitman. He has convinced me that this guy can be... I don't know if we'll ever have the true bona fide movie star that we had back in the 90s, the 80s, the 90s, the 2000s. Yeah. But if we're ever going to, he's pretty darn he's close it. to it. Uh, I was going to say. And he also feels like a throwback to those like 60s, 70s guys like yeah. Newman and Redford. Yeah, and like he's still got to... I think before we can fully stamp him that, I think he's still got to have another one or two more hits. Uh, he's yeah. had he, he's had a couple of really good ones, obviously, with the romantic comedy, what's it call it? Um, anyone but you. Yeah, anyone but you. You throw this in there. He had a critically acclaimed performance in Hitman with, uh, that was on Netflix. Um, and that was a big hit on Netflix. Yeah, it was a huge hit on Netflix. So, he still needs to have like one or two more things that you know, just where he just kind the he, the box office just gets blown apart because of right because he's in it, and then you start getting that moment where people start saying, "Oh, I don't know what that movie's about, but I want to go see it because that guy's in it." Yeah. Uh, and, and he's it feels really close. like we're heading that way. Yeah. yeah, it is. It feels like we're heading that way. And I said, having said all that, this movie is Daisy Edgar Jones's movie. Uh, yeah, I was she was really this. good. I was too, and I've seen people say they don't like her or this part. I don't get it. I thought she was really good. Yeah, I thought she was good too. I, I think they probably could have used her a little bit better. I think they could have made her a little bit more emotive. I think they, uh, but you know, there were times when you just watch her staring at the, staring at the weather. I don't know how they that you're like, okay, what are we seeing here? Like, I wish they could have done something to make us see what she was seeing a little bit better because there were times when I just yeah, got lost in that. Mm -hmm. But, you know, Bill Paxton had a little bit of the same thing. So, but you're right, though. How do you show that? Right. You know, where she's seeing stuff. I, I think about, like, have you ever seen The Hangover? Yeah. Uh -huh. Remember when uh, uh, Zach Galifianakis uh, is at the at the blackjack table and he's showing all the numbers <laughs> yeah. and stuff. <laughs> yeah. and, it, and then it's like crazy stuff. Like, I don't know how how you show it where right, yeah, you know, she's either. seeing whether that no one else is. But yeah, I, yeah so. I'm, I'm, I'm with you. Like, how do you do that? I bought her as that character, though. Yeah, I did too. I, I bought her as that character and, as well. And I, th and I thought they did a good job of like the scene afterwards where she, oh, let me say the first scene where I've I've seen Daryl McCormick who plays her boyfriend Jeb in mm. several things, and I was excited because I was like, man, I didn't know he was in this movie. He's in uh, Bad Sisters. He's mm. in The Woman in the Wall. He's been in a lot of things lately, and I was like, man, I love this guy. And then I was like, and I saw, and I was like, oh no, he's about to die. Yeah. And I was like, dang it, yeah. <laughs> dang it. But, well, Kier, uh, Kieran Shipka has been in a lot of stuff too. I know. She said, uh, you know, she's really on her way. You know, she from Bad Men to Sabrina, she was a a big part of Long Legs lately. So yeah, I mean, she's a big star. I was like, man, they're gonna kill her off. Yeah, they did. Uh, they, but, uh, but the scene, well, the I, was scene just saying, I, I just I thought when I saw her on there, because I wasn't as familiar with Jeb, but when I saw her, I was like. It feels like these people are supposed to die. I'm like, are they going to kill her yeah. in this? And yeah, they do. They kill yeah. her in it. So. Yeah. Me, but but I saying? thought the next scene where she's working for the National Weather Service, right. and they're like, this one guy's like, the storm's going this way. And like, she's like, the other guy's like, yeah, whatever. Hey, Kate, what do you think? <laughs> right. No, he's wrong. It's going this way. There, Everyone wants to listen to her. Right. I thought, okay, 
we're showing that, you know, she has this, I guess, ability. Yeah, they do. They do a really good job of that. All right, tell you what, let's do this. Let's take a real quick break, and then we'll talk about some of the specifics of the film. All right, so, just getting into the plot of this, like I said, uh, th- there are things about the plot that don't make a whole lot of sense. There are things about this plot that I don't understand. Like, I don't understand how Dorothy got to this this crew of people from the original. Yeah, yeah. I have no idea. A lot of it I don't care about. This movie just was absolute, yeah. an absolute ton of fun. I watched yeah. it. When I was watching it at home, I was just completely bought into it. I, like I said, I don't know. You know, sometimes I can forget. And I was wondering about that because, like, being at the theater and the sound and having a crowd, you know, made this a more enjoyable watch. I was, I was c- concerned that it wouldn't be at home, but I'm glad it is. No, I loved it. I, I but was, that also, you know, that takes into fact our TVs and sound system are much better. Yeah, well, the way I watch it is just because of the fact that if, look, we whenever I have to watch something, Allison wants to watch it eventually, but she couldn't watch it with with me at the time. I was so, going to say, I would have yeah. thought your family would have wanted to see it. Jackson wants to see it, uh, but he didn't want to watch it when I, when I watched it. Uh, Allison, wants, Allison wants to see it, but she was having, her leg was hurting her at the time, so she had to go into to the bedroom. So what I ended up doing, and this way I watch pretty much anything when I watch it by myself, I, on the Roku app, you can send the phone. You can send the audio to your phone, and then I put my yeah, Airpo- yeah. I put my AirPods in and listen to it that way. And look, it's just like completely like loud and everything is great. Oh, I uh, bet. but anyway, this movie, like I said, it's just it is just so much fun watching it uh, that I can get, forgive a lot of story stuff in this. Like I said, yeah. I, I didn't. Yeah. I would have liked to have known how they got Dorothy. I would have thought it would have been great. But, yeah, yeah. Uh, but we don't get that. Uh, I would have liked to have seen a little bit more of the like understood a little bit better about the science stuff. But we don't get we don't get the whole lot of the science. Yeah. Look, they could, they could have, there's a fine line to walk there. But, you know, you do yeah. too much of that and it gets boring. Uh, but regardless, like I said, it's an absolutely incredibly fun film. Uh, it, you feel danger for our people because yeah. there are times you're like, okay, are they going to survive this? Um, because you, when you kill people off in the very beginning of this thing, which they do at the very Especially front of this, people you recognize. Right, mm-hmm. You make, it makes you think, okay, well, some of these people could end up not surviving this thing. Yeah. Uh, I just, like I said, I just thought it was absolutely fun. But, you know, I said at the top of this thing, they're playing the hits again. They're, they take the basic general formula of the first one and they give us a lot of the same hits. So we start off this film with the big, huge set piece where they are trying to like track down this story. They're trying to basically prove this. Uh, they're trying to prove Kate's experiment that she can actually right. uh, tame a tornado, as they say. Uh, and they miss. They, they basically get it wrong. The, 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 the storm ends up being bigger than they think it is. Uh, the the storm the tornado ends up being far more massive than anything that they were expecting. And it ends up killing Jeb. It ends up killing Addy. And was Boone the other one? No, Boone was not the other one. No, Boone, Boone's the, the yeah. twins guy. Yeah, he's t- I think it's Craven. Yeah, you're correct. That's who it was. It was Craven. I played by Nick Dodani. Um, Praveen. Uh, but they were... They end up dying this opening scene, and you know I knew Anthony Ramos was not. I'd seen him in the trailer, yeah, and yeah, I was like, okay, yeah. well, Anthony Ramos is going to live. And look, this is the second uh, time we talked about Anthony Ramos. With the, uh, he played yeah. in Transformers: Rise of the Beast. Yeah, what were I enjoyed th- him as well. Yeah. I thought he had the worst part. Yeah, oh, because gosh, he's yes. like the third wheel. Yeah, know? he is. Mm-hmm. You know, obviously, he has a thing for Kate, and she's like, no. No, mm-hmm. but like. Uh, I thought he did a good job. I really like Anthony Ramos. I've seen him in, like, he's in Hamilton. He's yeah. in a lot of stuff. If you look at it, he's been around for, you know, he's a young guy, but he's done yeah. a lot. Yeah, yeah. And I, I thought, again, he has the worst part, but I, I, there's something about the guy. He's likable. Yeah, he is. He's, he's a likable guy. Uh, but this sets the stage for this entire film uh, because Kate, who has some superpower where she can tell yeah. where a, a storm is going to form, basically. Uh, the, she, the Jean Grey of the storm. That's right. She's got some kind of power where she can figure this stuff out. But she obviously blamed herself for, for a lot of this because they were doing this for her project. That was a big part of it. Uh, and her three of her friends end up getting killed throughout the course of this. So she has this trauma that is weighing on her. She's got all that, you know, that she has to deal with and she has to battle through. Uh... 
And then Robbie comes to her, was it seven years later, five years later? I don't remember how many years had passed. I don't know what... I, I, yeah, I can't remember. Ha, yeah, yeah. It, it had been it's a like, while. But, yeah, it had been a few years later, yeah. But he's got this special weather radar now because he got it from, because he was in the military, and now he has, like, mobile ones. Uh, and I was always wondering, I was like, okay, at some point, She's gonna to have to break away from Javi and end up going with Glenn Powell. I was like, I was five, five years later. Okay, I was like, when is this going to play? How is this going to play out? How is this going to happen? Because when you meet all of these scientists and you meet David Corn Sweat, who plays who plays Scott, uh, who is yeah. the a hole of the bunch, uh, yeah. you're like, okay. And again, future Superman. Yeah, he's gonna be Superman, and that's coming next year, isn't it? Next year, yeah. yeah. So you'll see him as in. Actually, I think I think it's around the same time, July of next year. I think you're right. So uh, you'll you'll be seeing him again in, on the big screen. But like I said, when I saw these guys, like these aren't the people that we're going to be cheering for throughout the course of this thing. Uh, yeah. And when when Tyler and his crew roll up, they're rowdy. Everybody like flocks to him. I was like, okay, yeah. how are we going to make them? How are we going to make Kate want to go away from? What, who she's currently with yeah. to who she's to Tyler's crew uh, I was like how's this going to happen what were your thoughts about the opening just how everything is introduced uh, in this thing it was awesome watching Glenn Powell and Tyler and his crew drive up I have seen the if you can feel it chase it like a, a hundred million times in the trailer right. it was still awesome in the movie <laughs> when he jumps out and has like how could you not chant something right. if Glenn Powell's chanting it to you you know asking for you to chant it right. and just the way he comes out you're like damn that's a star and yeah. I love all his crew of another young actors Brandon Perea who plays Boone we saw a nope in the OA uh, Katie O'Brien we've seen yeah, I've seen in, a lot. Uh, Mandalorian, Sasha Lane, we've seen in a couple of things how to blow up a pipe uh, pipeline. Mm. You know, just like that ragtag crew of people of misfits that nobody else wanted, and they're with them. You know, and I was like, this looks like a fun crew. Yeah, it does. It looks like a fun crew, and they were. And I don't know what it is about Kate, obviously, but Tyler recognized something in her because as soon as uh, yeah. as soon as she like steps out and is like looking well, at the storm, I mean, she's she's developed, attractive well, yeah. as well. Let's just yeah. be honest. She is, and but he starts asking her about meteorology yeah. and stuff. So obviously, yeah. he sees something in her when she's looking at the storms, and he immediately like kind of like takes her word for it because. He was going to chase the storm to the west at the very beginning. When they go to the east, when they actually end up going to the east, she's like, "Nope, we're going that way because we're going to follow her." So, um, what works just so well about this film? One, it's fun. Uh, two, yeah, the tornadoes are—they look real. I mean, they, they are good. The, the effects in this are absolutely fantastic. I mean, I was going to say Lee Isaac Chung, who was mostly known for that movie Minari with Steven Yeun that was really good. Have you ever right. seen that movie? No, I've not. Oh, it's fantastic. And who's from Arkansas, by the way. Oh, okay. So he has some familiarity with uh, tornadoes. I thought he really spoke, you know, a lot of times you hear this stuff, he directed, he filmed this on film, right. not the digital. Supposedly that helps, you know, with the, I, I don't know. I have no right. expert on stuff, but it looked good. Yeah, and like the tornadoes look real. Yeah, they did. They, they look very real. Uh, so then we get this first one, and Kate screws up because she gets scared because she starts reliving yeah. what happened to her five years earlier with with her other friends, and they don't get the data that they need. But this is also when they show what's going to cause the split between her and Javi because we get this developer who is talking them talking to Javi and and Scott about you know. What's the next one going to be? I got to, you know, make money. Basically, what he's doing is, he, is when these people are, are getting their lives destroyed, he is swooping in with an offer to buy their land from them and take their and take their land and basically profit off of it because he's getting it for much cheaper at that point because people don't want to. And not to mention, mm -hmm. most of the time, your insurance doesn't cover everything in yeah. these storms too. Uh, so they're getting ripped off multiple ways. Yeah. So, so of course they take his offer. Yeah, so they take his offer because he's funding their project. He's funding their their research, basically. Um, so, like I said, I was like, okay, now I know how we're going to have the separation. Yeah, yeah. What is going to cause this? Because as soon as and Javi knows this as well, because every time that the yeah. developer is coming around, he is trying to get her pushed off to the side, right, trying to is. make sure that he she is nowhere around to hear their conversations and make sure that she doesn't hear any of that. Uh, it's only when Scott basically kind of pushes the issue. And like mentions the guy's name, and she starts doing some research on him. That 
she finds out who this guy actually is. So, um, I thought the uh, the next kind of big action set piece that we well also what I think is interesting is when they start telling us about Tyler, uh, we start learning about him that he's not just you know just a cowboy. He does this stuff for YouTube. He does this stuff for uh, for the for the engagement and stuff. But he still is a trained meteorologist. He still understands yeah. all this. He actually has a degree. He knows his stuff. This isn't just some guy who's you know having yeah. fun on the internet. Uh, and look. When he needs to do that, when he needs to show that he actually is smart and he actually knows his stuff, I thought he did a really good job of portraying that he's... Glenn Powell, right. I don't know if he'll ever win an Oscar. I have no idea. I don't know if that's yeah. ever going to be the case. But he's got enough acting chops, he he could conceivably oh, yeah. do it. But like I said, he's not just... Well, Hitman yeah. is, you know, could, could potentially, yeah. you know, with, especially with this year, if the, if yeah. the, the fall acting... Excuse me, of fall movies, you know, fail, he potentially could. But yeah. I'm with you. I, he does have the chops. Yeah, he does. Like I said, I don't. Hitman's the only real role I think that he's had that would even give him a, give him even a shot at this point. But yeah, he'll yeah. have he'll have his moments. He'll have his opportunities as things play out. Obviously, he's not winning an Oscar for this, but he's still really no. good in it. But yeah. it's still, like I said, it's he's really good. He knows how to. He knows how to just kind of captivate the audience. He knows how to like capture their attention and the screen, let the camera obviously loves him. There's no question about that. Yeah. So, um, well, he also has what Bill Paxton had, like he cares about helping people, right? You know, and you, sh he's showing that. Yeah. Right. Where like, they're like, their concern is, Hey, we're doing this to raise money and to make sure we can prevent this stuff from right. happening. Like basically, this kind of leads to the the scene at the rodeo because they are, you know, she is in her hotel room. The uh, and this is when Glenn Powell shows up. This is when Tyler actually shows up to. Uh, he brings her pizza and wants to kind of talk to her, and then he like takes her out to the rodeo. And this is when the two start to bond, and this is when we start to learn more about him, and she starts to learn more about him, more so than anything else. Yeah. She starts to kind of understand who he is and why he does this, and it's like I said, it's not just because of the fact that he is wanting YouTube engagement. He is, actually enjoys doing this, but he also, she learns that he is scared of tornadoes, and like he has this line, which would have been a great line, was, you know, uh, you can't... I don't remember exactly what it was, but you can't overcome your fears if you don't face them or something like that. Uh, yeah, yeah. But, but this is also the stand-in for the movie, the drive-in scene. Uh, this is when in the original yeah. when they're at a drive-in, they're watch everybody's watching this film, and a tornado just kind of just start, uh, forms out of nowhere and like just ravages this drive th drive-in. And this is what happens in this film as well. And this is a great scene because you got. That hotel, they end up going to this this motel where you got one guy who is like just berating the the manager and one and, woman. And like, you know who that was? Who was that? That's Bill Paxton's son, James. Oh, is it really? Oh, okay, I did yeah. not know that. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> uh, well, so he's sitting there berating the the manager, and you got the girl, his girlfriend or his wife or whoever. Like, there's never yeah. a tornado. You don't ever have. They're they're always false. They're always uh, false warnings. Uh, and they end up going down to this this pool uh, because it's below ground. And like I said, I don't know if that would have been the best place or not. Probably, yeah. uh, but like it's still so very exposed. I was like, I don't know if I like this. Yeah. What were your thoughts about that entire uh, sequence? That was, I mean, that was an awesome storm, and like it was, like you said, you felt like they were in peril. There were multiple times, like Glenn Powell had to grab something, yeah. you mm -hmm. know, or it looked like he was about to be blown away, and I right. was like, "Damn, are they about to kill him?" Yeah, you know. So, uh, so I mean, it looked like they were in legit danger, and the storms looked powerful and scary. Yeah, they did. They were. Really you know, I heard someone describe these are monster movies. Yeah, they are because these these tornadoes just appear out of nowhere. They just form very quickly, yeah. and you have to escape yeah. them. And like that's a very good way to describe them. Um, but this is also when we get the separation between Javi and Kate because when she come when Javi comes into town uh, when he tracks her down, he 
is that they basically start getting into an argument and because she's asking about the developer guy and he's like saying, you know, this is kind of what we have to do to get our research. You know, it, it just is what it is. And he throws in her face because she says it shouldn't just be about the money and he throws in her face. Well, we were trying to get you your grant when we lost our three friends and that does not go well. <laughs> no, uh, no. She basically steals his truck. <laughs> so, and I was like, okay, well, she's going to take his truck and she goes home. And throughout the course of this thing, because they don't say her last name, name at any point and i'm thinking they're trying to make us think that helen hunt's about to pop out when she goes i guarantee you helen hunt was supposed to be this role she tried to do a sequel in 2020 and they turned it down and i bet you she got pissed and said no to this Uh, okay that felt like a complete setup because that would have made sense that why dorothy is in this yeah I'm, I, I really, I don't. At some point, we'll find out that it was Helen. Although I love Mara, Mara Tyranny, always happy to see her. She yeah. was great as her mother. But I'm telling, you, it just, it felt like it was going to be Helen Hunt. Yeah, because like even when she's like when Mara Tyranny's character, uh, Kathy, she's walking in the dark. You don't see her. Uh, it's like they're trying to make you think this is Helen Hunt's about to walk through there, and it's it's not. So, uh, but you you're probably correct. It wouldn't surprise me if Helen Hunt just got tired of the fact that they wouldn't make the sequel with her and she decided just to not have anything to do with it at all. Uh, but this is when we get, so, you know, this is when Tyler and Kate really come together. Uh, this is when you really start to feel, you know, you, you felt the romance and stuff. And obviously, you know, they don't, they don't kiss in this, even though apparently there was a scene that they cut where they do kiss. Because of Steven Spielberg, of all people, oh, really? watched the cut and said, yeah, he didn't like it. Okay. Interesting. I, I find that interesting. But, uh, but yeah, so, this is where they're bonding. They're they're talking. They're they're bonding about this, and this is when he comes across her research about how to tame a tornado. And he's like, you know, you could do this. The numbers say that it works. And so they go out and they test it in this one, and it doesn't with this small tornado, probably an F one. Uh, they go out and they test it, and it doesn't work. So, you know, this is discouraging. But this ends up leading us towards our finale, which is the big, huge tornado. Probably an F five if we had to if we an E F five. Lots of stuff going on in this one. So you've got you know you got the two crews that are racing to try to get to it to to the tornado first. Once the tornado forms, you've got the oil refinery place that it gets oh my with God, the tornado yeah. fire. What were your thoughts about all this? That was crazy. I mean that that was just you know absolutely frightening what, what a horrible thing that would happen to your town if, yeah you know that starts going yeah uh, so you got that uh they're trying to get they're trying to get to you know tyler and his crew are trying to get to the town to, to warn everybody to help everybody scott is basically telling hoppy no we've got to go back to the developer guy i can't remember his name don't really doesn't really matter um but he's the talking, villain. yeah the villain basically and uh hoppy has had enough and he basically throws him out of uh, he throws him out of the, the the truck. He tells him to get out, thinking Scott thinks that he's going to get the stuff off the truck, and he just drives off without him. Um, anyway, so you have the big scene uh, where they know they're about to die because this big, huge tornado is coming towards them. They don't. This movie theater they're in isn't going to hold up. It's just not. Which, which again, the monster movie Frankenstein is playing. Yeah. Oh, that's right. I forgot it was Frankenstein. I'm glad you mentioned that. Uh, so they've got that going. And this is when, you know, this is when Kate realizes, I don't know how, you know, there's only, the only way that we're going to stop this is if my experiment actually works. So she gets in Tyler's truck, she drives to the tornado, she puts the things, she puts the, she plants the truck down, uh, you know, she, you have the moment that I knew was coming where the things wouldn't work. She's sitting yeah. there. I'm like, I'm yeah, like okay, you knew that was coming. And finally, she gets it to work. Uh, and every, all she, the tornado a, sucks up. A, a trope of any movie like oh, yeah. this. You trope know of any it's movie. not going to work. Uh, she gets it to work just in time, obviously. And then you have yeah. to wait because obviously it takes time for all that stuff to to, right. to react. Like I said, I don't know if the signs on this works, but this, the tornado dissipates at that point. Uh I hope it, man, how cool would it be if they could actually get this stuff to work? Yeah, it would be. Like I said, uh, I, I'm assuming they get, they have this theory from somebody. I would assume they got yeah, it from somebody, yeah. but I, yeah. I have no idea. So, uh, and we, at the end, we know Javi is basically telling her, you know, the people are saying that it was something else. It was like the fire in, in the oil or something like that. they like messed up the temperature that made it go away. He's like, but I know it was you, you know, go up to, go back to New York, press them, do whatever you got to. Uh, you got, 
Tyler, who is like makes his way into the airport to track her down. Then the, the flight gets canceled. Which was a great scene. Yeah. With Paul Shear, uh, the great Paul Shear was the, the security guard yeah, trying right. to stop him. Yeah, that's yeah. fantastic. Uh, good stuff, like I said, just really good stuff. And then there's no real mid credit scene. I mean, there kind of is where you've got Daisy Edgar Jones basically saying, when do I get my own T-shirt? Kind of yeah. hinting that they but, might do a sequel, basically, is what they're kind of saying at this, so. This feels like it's going to get a sequel. Yeah, it really does. Uh, it's I don't know how much money it made. It made a good bit. I mean, it didn't cross a billion. Oh, it's people. almost. Yeah, I know it's almost two fifty uh, yeah. domestically. I, I mean, it's doing very well. Yeah, let me check the box office on it real quick. Uh, it is currently worldwide at three forty. Is that right? Three forty-seven. Uh, domestic is at 250 uh, international one basically 100 yeah 347 is basically what it is and uh, I no, that's a lot of money yeah, I don't nowadays know if, yeah it is I don't know what the budget for this thing was let me see if I can find the budget for it uh, Twister's budget well it's still making like it's going to get even more because it's still making like ten million a you know oh, weekend. Yeah. yeah. So, it, so it may get to three hundred. No, it's already at three hundred. It's at three fifty right now. So no, I'm talking about three hundred domestic. Oh, oh, oh yeah, yeah, good yeah. shot at that. So the budget was one fifty five. So you're basically right where you want. If you're going to, if you're going to make a movie for one fifty five, you want to make at least double it. So they're a little over double it. So you're you're right in that wheelhouse for where, for where you want it. So. And you got to think people like yourself are watching it on VOD. They just came out on VOD, yeah. so there's got to be people doing that. Yeah, I would imagine as well. So, like I said, I really feel like this will end up getting this will end up getting a sequel yeah. so long as they can get it greenlit and get everybody back on track with yeah. it. Uh, so. well, getting Glenn Powell is probably going to be the hardest part. Yeah, because that, that may be the hardest part. Top Gun Maverick is the a sequel is coming. You know, they've already said that, and they have for sure signed up Cruz, Miles Teller, and him. Yeah, and so that's that's coming for him. Uh, I'm trying to think, what are his next couple of projects coming? Let's see. Uh, I don't... All right, so... Well, he's, he's filming that uh, Hulu TV show, Chad Powers, where he plays like a former uh, NFL quarterback. It's right. like Eli Manning did that skit a few years ago, yeah. and now he's doing it where he's a former quarterback that's uh, faking... At, to be in college again or something. All right. So his it next one, look, uh, so apparently his next one is backdraft, a, a remake of backdraft. So like, again, That's crazy again, like playing the hits, basically he knows that will probably yeah. be a, a big, a big hit for him. Uh, oh, the running man. He's oh, yeah. doing, the, he's in the middle of that. Too. So, like I said, another remake that, of it. So That feels like, because that's that was a cool movie. It did well for Schwarzenegger. It wasn't as big as, like, Re Total Recall right. or Terminator. But, like, with, with and that's with Edgar Wright. With him and, and like, an up-to-date, that feels like it has the potential to be a big hit. Yeah, it could be. So, we'll, we'll, we'll see. But, uh, yeah. big stuff for him. Look, Daisy Edgar Jones is interesting. I like her. I, I, I think she could do some big stuff as well. I like her too, but she just hasn't, like, she's done a lot of stuff. She did, she was in well, Fresh. Well, she was in that... Uh, she was she was in that um, the where the Crawdex thing, and that ended yeah. up being a big hit. Yeah, it ended up being a pretty big, a pretty good movie for her. Uh, she was in Fresh, which was a yeah, we all like that. Yeah, we like that. Uh, I think she is kind of on the verge of breaking out. Kind of. Uh, yeah, I think so too. Well, I know she's in that. Uh, she was on that Netflix show, Normal People, that also had uh, Paul Mescal. That you yeah. know, he broke out. And uh, people loved that show. I know uh, my wild wife was one of them that really right. loved it. I, I could see her. I'm sure she's got a couple things coming. Yeah, I, I think so too. I'll just like I said, I'll be willing to see what else that uh, happens for her. So, and not to mention this. This is going to be huge for them. Oh yeah, it, it will be. So, all right, tell you what, let's go ahead and take a break, and then we will do our awards for the sucker. All right, here on the Main Attraction Podcast, whenever we cover a season of a show or a movie, we give out six awards, all based on the six characters of Friends. At the top of our list is the Rachel, the star of the show. Who is your Rachel? I mean, it's got to be Daisy Edgar Jones and Glenn Powell, right? Yeah, it is. It, it, it very much is those two. Like I said, this is Daisy Edgar Jones' story, but 
Yeah. You can call them co leads. Uh, yeah. Uh, but uh, yeah, I think you're correct. I think they're, they're they're definitely the stars of this thing. So they are definitely the Rachel. Next is the Joey, just a character you loved, just somebody you watched, enjoyed watching on the screen. Who would you go with well, as your Joey? I've loved Mara Tierney since News Radio, so she's always going to be my Joey. And then I'll put <laughs> I put uh, Daryl McCormick and Kieran Shipka in that as well. It was even though it was brief, it was good to see them. All right, uh, this is where I ended up putting uh, Anthony Ramos as Javi. I put him uh, in, in this role. I, so. I put him somewhere else, okay. but I thought about him as well. Uh, next is the Chandler, the person who made you laugh the most. Who's your Chandler? Oh, uh, Brandon Pereira as Boone. We yeah. haven't talked about it enough. He was hilarious. He was. He was absolutely hilarious. <laughs> he has, I guess, the Philip Seymour Hoffman role, but he was really good. He is a, you know, the, the way he was filming YouTube and yeah. stuff, and he was really mad when Glenn Powell made him get out of the truck and right. stuff. I thought he was very funny. And like that moment when he like goes to, when when Tyler goes to him and is like, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry I left you. I'm sorry to that. And he's like, but what if I... And you know, like he's like, and Boone's like, I'm not. I will never forgive you. I can't forgive you. That was just uncalled for. You shouldn't. And he's like, what if we shoot rockets? And the next one's like, rockets. Oh, oh, okay, okay. I'm I'm back on. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah. So he was my Chandler as well. Uh, next is the Phoebe, the oddball, the bunch. Who's your Phoebe? This is where I put Javi as Anthony Ramos because, you know, was he a bad guy? Was he the good guy? <laughs> well, you know, he he was kind of like. On the fence about helping people, not helping people. So. Right. Uh, this is where I end up going uh, with uh, Lily, who's played by Sasha Lane. She just is an, she's always an oddball character whenever she, she shows is. up. Yes, and I agree. I thought she was an oddball character in this one. Next is the Monica, kind of the glue, somebody who just plays an important role in the movie. Who is your Monica? I'll put the rest of Tyler's uh, yeah. crew, which would be Lily, uh, what was... Uh, ben, the English uh, photographer. Who else was somebody Danny, else? Katie O'Brien. Dexter. Yeah, Katie O'Brien, Danny. Dexter. Yeah. Uh, t- yeah so I, I, I thought they were all fun, and they really, you know, made this movie yeah. work. Cause, you know, they should get a lot of credit, too. Yeah, uh, that's where I put them as well. So, uh, Next is the Ross, your least favorite character. Who's your Ross? Uh, I went with David Corn Sweat here, yeah. and the other guy, Riggs, David Bourne. That was the, uh, that was the developer. developer. Yeah, that was the developer. And I was like, who is that? I couldn't find him on 9 There he is. Yeah. But, yeah, I'm with you. They're, they're, they're easily the Rosses of this thing. So, yeah. All right. Ranking time here on the Main Attraction Podcast. When uh, we finish it, we like to rate our whatever we is whatever it is that we just watched. At the top of our rating system is a succession. Beneath the succession is a lost. Middle of the road forest is friends. Beneath the friends is a full house. And bottom of the barrel forest is a Baywatch. What are you rating, Twisters? Oh, this is a succession. This is almost a perfect summer movie blockbuster this is what i want this is why i go to the theater in the summer and it delivered yeah it's a succession for me i wasn't expecting to like it as much this is like the second time yeah. i've been pleasantly surprised by how much i enjoyed a, a yeah. film uh first time being the fall guy i love that yeah. film and this is very much in the same case i thought i would like this movie i thought i would enjoy it oh you know what else this does and the fall guy did this too in the original twister they used country music like the Twister did so good in the background. Shania Twain makes another appearance. There were like yeah. people like Luke Combs and stuff. Like it was cool. Like this was a cool soundtrack. Yeah, it's look, I will say this. Here's my thoughts on the soundtrack. It fits. It is a hundred percent it fits. I hated every single one of those songs for the most part. <laughs> oh my gosh, I hated those songs. Uh yeah. I just the it new, works so it works. The new version of country music, I just I struggle yeah. with big time. I really yeah, do. Yeah, yeah. But it, yeah, it a hundred percent fits. It, it fits the theme. You know, I would want, I wouldn't want Metallica here. I wouldn't want something like that. Uh, well, they had Van Halen was in the original movie. Yeah, so. that's true. Yeah, but like I said, most of the time, the country yeah. music vibe of this, it, it, it fits, yeah. it works. I still don't like the songs, but yeah, it 100% no, fits. I, <laughs> I, I can understand your, your, your thinking there. So, uh, but yeah, I, like I said, it 100% works for this film, but I just the songs, I'm like, oh man, those are bad songs. So, uh, anyway. But yeah, like I said, this is this is easily a succession for me. I, I love this film. I was surprised at how much I enjoyed it because it was just an absolute ton of fun. So, all right, before we sign off on this sucker, we do want to give our listeners some recommendations for some things that we have seen. What are some recommendations that you have? 
Oh, the original Twister is leaving uh, Max, Max at the end of uh, at, the, at the end of August. Okay. So, fair yeah, warning if you're you know yeah now watch it end up on Netflix. I wouldn't Probably. be shot, but <laughs> it's going up somewhere. But it's leaving Max if you have that. So let's talk about the great Michael Keaton. I watched Beetlejuice this week because I was like, I don't remember the last time I'd seen this movie. And it had been a long time because yeah, I really did not. I did not remember the plot. Like I knew, I remember the dancing and right. some of the stuff. And man, it's so much fun. I, I really enjoyed it. It really made me excited for Beetlejuice. Beetlejuice that comes out uh, September the sixth. Right. So uh, I'm, you know, it's Beetlejuice is on Max. Uh, if it's there for you to, to check that out. Also, Michael Keaton has a movie that he wrote and direct, directed and stars in called Knox Goes Away. It's on Max as well. It's been showing up on the you know the the, the front screen, right. or maybe it is for me because I like action movies. <laughs> so it's been like, Ryan, Knox Goes Away. But it was actually really good. It's about a contract killer that's losing his memory. And he has to help his son, James Marsden, who is in trouble. And he's losing his memory while this is going on. And so he's he's about to, he has some kind of dementia. And Al Pacino is in this as well. And I really enjoyed it. I, I would, you know, if you like a uh, mystery, suspense, action movie, this this is very good. Knox Goes Away with, uh, with Michael Keaton. And then uh, the other movie I watched, and it was on Max, I watched Love Lies Bleeding that Katie O'Brien is in from mm. Twisters, Kristen Stewart, Ed Harris. That is a weird, yeah, weird I have to watch it. I haven't seen it. Where's it. What's it on? I enjoyed it, though. It's on Max. Okay. I enjoyed it, but there's some times I'm like, what the hell am I watching? <laughs> it's a 24 movie. Right. The ending is Freaking wild! I hope you watch it because I would like to talk about okay. it. Uh, it is a wild ending, but it's good. It is. It's about uh, some bodybuilders and some lesbian bodybuilders in the eighties, and there's a crime element involved with in it. So yeah, I didn't want to see that. Uh, it it it's good. Katie O'Brien is really good. There's some you know award consideration for her. So uh, I would I would bring those up. Those, those are I guess mine so far. All right, I'm about to surprise Ryan here with, with my oh, recommendation. Oh, I can't wait to hear this. Uh, so, I was surfing through, I was just kind of uh, scrolling through Rotten Tomatoes the other day, and I saw, like, s season three of that 90s show was supposed to come out. I was like, three? When did two come out? So, I was like, I, 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 anyway. Wow, I, I missed two as well. I was, my son had, uh, we took him to an ACT workshop yesterday, and I had, it was in Tupelo. Uh, so, I had, like, all times, a ton of time to kill. So I was like, you know what? I'll throw this on. I'll see what it's like. When we reviewed this back in 2022, when we reviewed the first season, we both thought, okay, it's not the worst thing in the world, but it could be better. I said, one of the things I did say was, I said, if these younger kids can kind of figure out their parts, it could right. be pretty decent. They can figure out their parts. So season two is oh, good. This pretty good. Season three is really good. There are some, really yes. There are some. There is. There are some just insanely hilarious moments in this thing. Okay. Uh, there is a moment in the second season where they do a Mentos commercial riff. Uh, do you remember those? Okay, that sounds fun. It yeah, was so hilarious. There was a scene. The, fr the fresh maker. Yes, the fresh maker. Wasn't that their slogan? That's what. Uh, that's what their slogan was. Uh, there is a scene. With Carmen Electra, and that's all I'm going to say. That is absolutely one oh, of the hilarious, most funny. funniest things I've ever seen. I was really surprised at just how much I enjoyed Did it. Did they figure out the Aussie kid? Who He's one of the best board? parts now. He really okay. is. Because mm -hmm. we thought he had some potential, but yeah. they they were were not using him right. Yeah, he was one of the, he had one of the, he was one of the best parts of okay. season two and three. I'm not surprised about him. Yeah, he he was really good. Uh, like I said, they've. The Oliver, everybody kind of figures stuff out. The the lead, the girl who plays Layla, I thought she yeah. was good from the get go. Uh, but I thought, yeah, every, I I thought everybody else just kind of had to figure out what they were supposed to be doing. Uh, the kid who plays the Kelso kid, he is starting to kind of figure out how to channel action okay. catcher. Uh, like I said, there's a lot. Of, it's I was surprised at how much I enjoyed. it. I was laughing a lot more than I thought I would. Uh, like I said, well, how about that? Yeah, that's so, good. And look. They're eight season episodes. They're 22, 23 minutes. You can knock them out really, really quickly. Uh, like yeah. I said, I was, 
I kind of hoped that it would get better because I like the I like the all that uh, that seventy show. I thought it was really good, yeah, and yeah. you know they're obviously trying to get some of the same stuff. And I think they kind of figured it out. Like I said, I really enjoyed uh, season two. Is good. Season three is like borderline great. Uh, that's how much wow. they kind of figured it out. So you have blown me away with this one. <laughs> so uh, that's really all. That's all I have. I didn't get a whole lot of chance to watch anything else besides that. So uh, my other recommendation, I guess, though, uh, we are about to record our episode on episode four of Bad Monkey. If you haven't been checking it out, check it out and come back to us on Wednesday for Bad Monkey is really yeah. good. And come back for us on Wednesday and check out our review of episode four. So. Anything else you want to share before we sign off? Yeah, appreciate everyone joining us, and we will talk to you next time. I will echo those same sentiments, and as always, until next time, may all of your entertainment dreams come true.